for science! Science! Welcome everybody to another Dills Hearthstone League match. We are in week number three. Today we have a match between Tuck and Gator, both of whom have a one and one record currently. Go ahead and let the players know that they can start. And uh, we'll talk through the classes that each one of these guys are bringing. Tuck is bringing Priest, Warlock, and Mage. And his Warrior has been banned. And Gator has Druid, Priest, and Warlock. And his Shaman has been banned. I've let the players know that they can start. We'll have Gator on the bottom of your screen and Tuck on the top. Once again, Dill's Hearthstone League is an eight week long season of Hearthstone tournament play uh, for all of my patrons and subs. Quite a fun little uh, little collection of players and we've been casting a lot of the games. So if anybody's interested, season four, once season three wraps up, if you are a sub or a patron, you will receive a notice to sign up. All right, spectating Gator on the bottom, and let's get Tuck up on the top here. Whoops. There we go. We got him. We got him. All right, so looks like a Jade Druid for Gator against a Dragon Priest for Tuck. And the Dragon Priest is going to have to pressure the Jade Druid before the Druid can really get into the late game and start creating massive jade after jade so if you're tuck really the key here is to try to get things going quickly unfortunately the twilight whelp doesn't have another dragon in hand to activate so tuck is gonna miss the first turn gator's gonna be able to innervate out of jade blossom get the ramp going right away and start the jade train rolling uh, and does have the ability to go into wild growth or a coin jade spirit on the next turn so Pretty decent start there for Gator. Tuck goes ahead and plays another Spy Historian. Does get a Twilight Guardian, Twilight Drake, uh, Twilight Drake and a Nose Dormu. I think probably you want the Guardian here. It's going to be your strongest card out of the picks. The, the Twilight Drake isn't as good in a Dragon Priest because you don't tend to hold cards back, right? So you basically just play all your cards out of your hand. The Twilight Drake is never going to be very big. In Dragon Priest, you, your your goal with Dragon Priest is just to play on curve. But Tuck decides to take the Twilight Drake. Uh, I mean, has missed one turn, so the hand size is not terribly small. Raven Idol and Wild Growth here on turn three, so able to get some things going. Goes for a spell, Soul of the Forest, Savage Roar, and Starfire. Savage Roar may help end the game uh, a little early if you can get a few Jades to stick. I think it's probably going to be Savage Roar. Knolltown and chat want to cast my game at 9 p.m. Sure, if, you're, uh, if your game is going to be after this one, that would be fine with me. Make sure that your uh, opponent is okay with it as well. And then let me know. Does take the Starfire instead, just going for some removal. And we've got the Druid Bug. So that's just going to happen for a while, unfortunately. <laughs> Tuck on turn three does have the ability to play a Cabal Talon Priest. And I think you probably should. Yeah, you just need to build the build a board here so i believe the twilight drake will have one two three four five so it'll be a four six next turn which is not not too terrible but here you can go jade spirit and jade idol and uh already get the jades up to three threes you do with the first jade idol you don't want to shuffle it you want to build a jade that's a one mana three three that's pretty strong we got a turn for Twilight Drake, which is a 4-6. Can take a, at least one value trade. The 3-4 can go into the 3-3 three, three here. But Tuck is going to have to put the pressure on quickly. Hmm. Tuck bouncing over a heal. I think you really just want to continue developing, though. Because as I said, the uh, the Jade Druid, the, the worst thing you can give a Jade Druid is time. Gonna go with the Wormrest Agent instead, though. Looking to uh, get some value out of that hero power. A Lunar Visions is in the deck of Gator. K 
can draw some uh, jade minions and then play them out cheaply. That's an interesting card to be included in the jade, uh, in a uh, jade deck. I'm going to star fire off the 2-4. Starfire off the 2-4 doesn't open up any great value trades, unfortunately. It does draw into the deck. And just going to go for the full trade here. Uh, Gator's just thinking, all I need is time, like I said. If you can get time, then you'll be just fine. Dragonet Operative coming down. Bandrel, Jade Idol, and Raven Idol. These are not fantastic. The, the, at least the Jade Idol, or the Raven Idol, uh, can draw you into something useful in the matchup. No great ways to deal with this 5-6 outside of a swipe and a wrath. And that feels like a lot of resources to use. But uh, if you don't kill it, you're just going to allow a 5-6 to start smashing your face in. So is going to go ahead and just bite the bullet. Could choose to cycle wrath coin hero power. But uh, you are taking some damage if you go that route. You do get to cycle your deck, but you also have lunar visions in hand. I think I don't mind seeing Gator just go for the 3 damage wrath. And that's what Gator decides to do. This druid bug is really annoying. I love the I love a lot of the fixes that Blizzard has been doing, but uh, one thing that they haven't done <laughs> is fix the uh, the spectator. Unfortunately, and a power word shield the Twilight Drake. You can't make a Twilight Drake big by not playing a lot of cards and tapping. At least you can make it big by holding onto it for a while and then buffing it. I'm gonna go for a Raven Island. Goes for a minion, and there's a Prophet Velen. Uh, Doubtful that there's any major spells outside of this Holy Nova, but if you can get this Raven or this Prophet Velen to stick, that Holy Nova is going to be massive the turn after. There is a Mulch, however, but the Mulch is going to get used on the 4 9 right away. So down goes the Twilight, but here comes Prophet Velen. Silverware Golem. Just a vanilla 3 3, essentially. Prophet Villain's down, and there is no second mulch or any other damage outside of this swipe. Going to go ahead and Jade Blossom, creating a 4-4. Four, four. The ramp doesn't have any effect at this point because he is at 9 mana. But uh, I'm actually curious now. If you do that first, I believe you can now draw with the Wild Growth because he now is officially at 10 mana. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. We may need a little science here. A little science? But, uh... Gator might be thinking about how to deal with this. Gonna just hero power. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Wild Growth at this point does gain you the excess mana card. So this Holy Nova now does do 4 damage, so it will clear this 4-4. Four four. Um, if you do that, however, you don't have a great follow-up, so I think I'd like the Blackwing Corruptor and then use the 1-4 body. And then that allows you to also play out the Silverware Golem this turn, or you could play a Wormrest Agent, but I, I like just playing a Silverware Golem. Is going to go for that Wormrest Agent instead. Trying to protect the Prophet Velen. He's going crazy. I'm going to cycle the Wild Growth. No uh, Fandral cards right now. No Choose One cards in the hand, so... This has suddenly gotten to be a really dry hand. Living Roots does work with Fandral, however, there's nothing you can really kill with it. And swipe the 5-4, Living Roots the 2-4, and then with the coin and Innervate can also hero power. There's a lot of resources to expend, however. And still doesn't really protect the uh, Fandral, unfortunately. Yeah, Gator's hand is really dried up. But is going to go ahead and just go all in here. Going to get some bad news next turn, though, because the Shadow Word Pain is the an easy answer to the Fandral. And uh, Tuck has really found a way to apply the necessary pressure. And Gator just, just a really awkward draw. Unable to really get any traction in this game. That word pain on the 3 5. You can choose to just ignore the 1 1s and play this Twilight Guardian, and I like that. 
realizing now with an empty hand it's time to start pushing for face damage and uh, actually setting up a two-turn lethal <laughs> gator draws a brand bronze beard not a lot to do with that and that's gonna be it for game number one is tuck is gonna take a one nothing lead with the dragon priest beating this J druid and as I said J druid if it can if it can get enough time uh, can definitely have a good matchup against the against the dragon priest and thank God that stupid sound is over Yeah, the Lunar Visions is uh, is an interesting card to put into a Jade deck because Nourish is generally enough draw. But Lunar Visions, I mean, if you if you can draw a couple minions, then uh, the green circle is nice. The drone sound is rough. Yeah, exactly. You can, I mean, if you can get some minions with it, it, it can it can essentially ramp you into some Jade stuff on a later turn. Well We're gonna see Gator switch to his Warlock. And uh, Tuck is moving to a mage. And we see Thorson, Mirror Image, and a Flame Waker. I'm gonna guess Reno Mage, but possible that it could just be a Tempo Mage uh, with a Thorson and an Antonitis. But these days, more often than not, we see Reno. Both players throwing away their entire hands. And we do see the Leroy Jenkins in Gator's hand, so. This is the uh, Reno lock with the combo. Abyssal Enforcer, no great four right now for Gator. You really want to have those awesome four drops. So you can tap, 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 and play a giant minion on turn four. Tuck is uh, deciding whether it's right or not to develop the Sorcerer's Apprentice. The only thing it really dies to in uh, in standard Reno lock is a coined. Yeah, there's actually really nothing, right? Because you have you can deal one, you can deal four. A coined demon wrath would kill it, but yeah, that's not a great answer. So I I really like developing the three two. Sources apprentice is, is really strong here, and it allows you to uh, follow up with a flame waker. And there's two high pressure minions on the board now. And Gator's gonna whoa there is a sacrificial pact in Gator's deck just in the deck so we see some interesting tech being played here and we do see that Tuck is also bringing a warlock so I guess it could come into play if he were if, if Gator could ever get that matchup going could kill Lord Jaraxxus but uh, that is a very interesting inclusion it, it could also be there to uh, to help gain a little health. Sacrificial Pact, also known as I was expecting the Arena Lock Mirror. Yeah, basically. So a bunch of missiles. You also have a blast. Lots and lots of spells coming out. Still also has the ping available as all these spells cost zero. And looks like Tuck goes to the school of face missiles. I would have liked to have seen the ping happen before the arcane blast, but I guess now you can play your second sorcerer's apprentice. And the fact that we see two sorcerer's apprentices means this is just a tempo mage. It's not Reno. And tempo mage these days is a pretty good deck in a tournament setting. And Gator with uh, not a lot to do here could just play a second rate bruiser, but leaving up two sorcerer's apprentices and a flame waker, that firelands portal is only costing five and Gator is going to decide to just go for the blast crystal potion losing a mana crystal falling right even more there's a fen creeper off the five cost firelands portal and uh i think this is going to do it for Gator on this one not technically dead as a second rate bruiser can come out and soak some of this damage but if tuck were to have any other removal spells that would be it and i think the frostbolt will do it because you can Blood Mage down those Frostbolt ping and get all the damage through to the face. And that is going to do it. Game number two goes to Tuck. And Tuck is just blowing away Gator right now. Let's update that score, by the way. Tuck is up two to nothing and only has to win with the Warlock deck. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's Arena Lock. But uh, with the nerf to 
small time buccaneer, you have been seeing a lot more zoo lately. Suddenly zoo is, is not just completely destroyed by the early game pressure of the small time buccaneer and the patches. So you can actually get away with zoo finally again, which was uh, very strange to have a meta without zoo for a long time. It was very, it was, it was weird to see a one mana three, two, not be good enough for the meta. All right, we do see in Tuck's hand Your soul shall be mine. the Abyssal Enforcer, the Siphon, and the Twilight Drake. So it is a Reno Lock. So we have ourselves a Reno Lock Mirror, and we did find out that Gator is running the Sacrificial Pack. So maybe that could come into play. Both players are going are on the uh, tap pass plan for a while fellfire potion in tuck's deck so tuck is running all the aoe and there is the reno drawn for gator so that's a pretty big pickup i'm gonna play a dark peddler it's blood imp corruption and south sea deck and it's likely that corruption is your best pick here and that's what gator goes with because you can expect to see uh quite a few quite a few threats in the arena lock deck and this is just one more removal option even though it kind of sucks because it uh it kind of sucks because it, it takes a turn to go off i like guess playing the dr jicky nicky version okay i mean a lot of these cards are fairly standard but you don't see very many fell fire potions anymore a lot of people tested that card out early um and then just kind of went away from it I'm going to go for the Doomsayer rather than just dropping the Twilight Drake. Trying to get a cleaner board to play this Twilight Drake into. And currently, there's no real answer for uh, Gator here, but could go for the Dirty Rat play and try to get uh, an important minion out of Tuck's hand. I don't mind either option of playing it or holding it back, as you might be able to get some value from it later. But it is an interesting thought to go ahead and just drop that now. That way you get uh, another card out of Tuck. But you essentially you also lose your Dirty Rat. And Tuck now with the clean board going to be able to drop the Twilight Dragon. It is a 4-9. There is that Sacrificial Pact. I am very excited to see whether that actually does anything or not. This might be an interesting time to go ahead and play the Dirty Rat. As you could maybe Corruption whatever comes out. Not going to do it, though. Going to hold back and just Corruption the 4-9. And play a Sunfear Protector, which is basically just throwing it away, but also might be trying to relieve some pressure out of his hand so that he can start tapping again. Uh, JST1 Vaughn. Just one Vaughn. Thank you so much for the subscription. Welcome to the Dillionaires, my friend. Uh, during, during Dill's Hearthstone League matches, there is no subscription alert because these do go up on YouTube. Uh, so I will I will thank you in person. Thank you. I appreciate it. Second ray bruiser coming down. And right now Gator's hand is a little dry as far as playable threats. And sitting on nine cards, if you tap here, you have to play something. Interesting that uh, Tuck decided not to kill the two three. Instead, just opting to. Uh, Go for the face damage and tap and then use the hellfire and the two three to remove this four five is going to go ahead and do that the so both players just trying to keep the other the other side of the board as clean as possible and again we're not seeing very many playable threats right now so really awkward turn here if you're tuck one one turn away from being able to play Ragnar as the Fire Lord, but outside of that, you're just dropping an ooze. Tuck is thinking through all the options here, and I don't really like any of them. I guess you just play the ooze. You gotta play something, right? I believe he's on either on nine or ten cards very close to a full hand just drops the use and that's and that's it and there is a kazakis with the brand 
Unfortunately, you're also at 10 cards, but you can throw the coin out if you like. So I, I would like to see the brand Kazakas here, and then you can just coin to uh, open up your hand a little bit. It looks like that's what Gator is going to go for. It doesn't get much better than brand Kazakas. Could also just go for a one mana spell here, but it looks like we're going to see some 10 mana spells. Dealing six to all, freezing three, or gaining ten armor. Depends on if you think you're gonna get the board back or not. Goes for giving the minions health and gaining armor. Can deal eight damage with Heart of Fire. That's pretty good. Deal eight damage, summon an eight eight. Both seem like pretty good options. Again goes for health and three demons. Gonna go ahead and coin and just throw away the uh Throw away the mortal coil. He didn't have to do that. Was was at nine cards and could have kept the mortal coil. Tuck draws his own Kazakus, but doesn't have the brand to go along with it. Is likely going to have to deal so many with the uh, brand, though. So we may see either a Fellfire Potion here. Or that maybe just gonna drop that Ragnaros. That's an interesting idea as well. Can trade with the Kazakus, drop Rag and take a 50-50 on killing the brand. If you don't kill the brand, that is very scary, however. So personally, I think I would like to see the uh the Fellfire potion come down. Just clean this up. May also be thinking it doesn't want to go down to 12 life, right? Because Fellfire Potion does deal damage to your own face. Tuck is running out of time, is considering the Kazakus pulls back at the last second and just goes face with the 3-1. Trying to give yourself a better chance to hit a minion. It does hit the brand. That was pretty important. And there's uh, no fantastic option here outside of Twisting Nether to, remo to remove this Ragnaros, so Gator is just going to go for that. And there is a Curse of Reform in Tuck's deck, so all sorts of interesting inclusions in these guys' decks. Curse of Reform, maybe, uh, maybe a tech to try to take down... Oh, is this lethal? That's 10. The Curse of Reform is actually lethal with a Soul Fire! Oh my goodness. Tuck takes the 3-0 sweep. Curse of Reform lethal. Really impressive stuff there. Curse of Reform actually coming into play perfectly. And Gator, unfortunately, is going to die with Reno Jackson in hand. Wow. Really interesting stuff there. I like the idea. Both of these players were bringing some fun and interesting cards. Congratulations to Tuck. Tuck will move to two and one, and that is going to mean that Gator falls to one and two.